Let me tell you about a great and good American and a great and good friend of mine who just finished his run here on earth, Senator Dan Inouye. A soldier, a senator, statesman, but always an American patriot of enormous resolve and, and principle. Senator Inouye's extraordinary accomplishments are the stuff of legend. A little bit of history. When America was plunged into World War II by the attack on Pearl Harbor, nowhere, I think, in, in this country was the impact of that surprise attack as keenly felt as amongst the community of Americans of Japanese ancestry. And Owe and many other second generation Americans of Japanese ancestry, called Nisei, uh, all demanded the right to defend this country like other American citizens. You see, for them, because of the attack, they've been declared four C enemy aliens not allowed to serve in uniform, bare arms. And so they put this demand forward to, to the Congress, and to our country's credit, they were heard, <coughs> leading to the creation of all Nisei units commanded by Caucasian officers. Units like the 100th Infantry Battalion, the 442nd uh, Regimental Combat Team, the Military Intelligence Service, the MIS. Dan and always served in the 442nd as an infantryman, enlisting at age 18. Within a year, he was promoted to sergeant. Okay, so that's a pretty fresh track, even by today's standards. Okay. Uh, his performance in combat led to a battlefield commission of second lieutenant in 1944, age 20. Less than a year, after that promotion, while leading his platoon in an attack on enemy machine gun positions near San Terenzo, Italy, he's shot in the stomach. Yet he presses on to destroy the first machine gun nest with hand grenades and a Thompson submachine gun. And then he rallies his, his platoon for an attack on the second machine gun position, which he also successfully destroys before collapsing from a loss of blood. Regaining consciousness, he crawls to the final bunker cocks his right arm to throw his last hand grenade. At that moment, an enemy soldier fires a rifle grenade, strikes his right elbow, severing most of his right arm without dislodging a live grenade that's gripped in his palm. So I know he shouts for the rest of his platoon to stay back while he pries a hand grenade uh, from his useless right hand, tosses it with the other hand into the bunker, uh, and then rises with his submachine gun, silences the last of the enemy with one-handed you know, one burst from the Thompson uh, before he's wounded a third time and falls to the ground unconscious. For this action, I think most of you know, he's awarded the Medal of Honor. Dan Inouye spent the next two years in Army hospitals where he met two fellow soldiers with similar wounds, and many of you know this story, Bob Dole of Kansas and Phil Hart of Michigan. Dole had his right arm shattered by machine gun fire. Hart had his right arm badly injured by, artillery round, by an artillery round on Utah Beach in Normandy. And so for those of you who have spent any time on a hospital ward, you know how important camaraderie is. The three formed an immediate bond. And with the help of the other two, Dan Inouye uh, decides on a new purpose in life, and one public service, because the others had pretty much committed to that. You see, before the war, Inouye wanted to be a surgeon, but the loss of the right arm changed those plans. So he returned to, the school, uh, returned to school on the GI Bill, earned a bachelor's degree in political science from the University of Hawaii, and then a law degree from George Washington University. He was elected to the Hawaii Territorial House of Representatives in 1953, to the Territorial Senate in 1957 to the U.S. House of Representatives when Hawaii becomes a state in 1959, and finally to the U.S. Senate in 1962. He had been preceded into the Senate by Phil Hart in 1958. And then Bob Dole soon joins the two of them in 1968. And between 1968 and 1976, when Phil Hart dies, they serve, to they serve together in the Senate. These three soldiers who met in a hospital ward talking about their futures and the opportunity to go back and leverage an educational opportunity. And they go on to serve again this country. And remember, it is this generation that came 
out of World War II that went back and got the GI Bill that then went to work in education and government and religion and science and business and turned the course of events for our country where they helped produce an economy that became the largest in the world. Inouye, Dole retires in 1996. Dan Inouye stays on to become the Senate's President Pro Tem, the Senate's most senior member, and occupied an office in the Hart Building until his death here in December. The Hart Building named after Phil Hart. I tell you the story not because of my personal relationships with Dan Inouye and my enormous respect for the other two senators, all three of them. Today, some of you and your fellow veterans are just where Dan and Oe and Hart and Dole were 65 years ago. You may not see yourself in that position, but you are. Transitioning back to civilian life, perhaps dealing with new limitations, looking for new direction, new purpose, hoping this education opportunity is going to clarify things for you. It will, if you complete courses of study and get to graduation. Also important are the friendships you're going to make amongst your veteran cohort along the way. The friendships you form now amongst your fellow veterans can help you decide your future and theirs. And it's a future in which you very, very possibly will find each other uh, serving together. These relationships can make a difference between success and failure for each other and open opportunity not considered before. And if SBA can help facilitate these opportunities, both in the relationship building and in the completion of education and training, it will have earned its place among the VSOs of the 20th century, and SVA, SVA will go down in history as one of the truly great VSOs.